Can you introduce episode 26, part 2, please, Smokey? Come on. That's not introducing it. Give us a meow for part 26, episode 26, part 2. Thank you. Rock music on because the we are up a gear. We've gone up a gear, all right. On the build, forget the shell. We were just cruising along when we did that. We're up a gear. We're into trim dashboards, wiring. You know what I'm like. We're all that stuff. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I told you about multitasking, didn't I? Vinyl prep. A vinyl clean. We'll worry about the air salts just yet. Prep yet. Paint, colour bond and vinyl coat by colour bond. Two lots of vinyl paint there that have arrived. Ta -ta 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 told you we were doing all the multi. So one colours for the door cards, one colours for the material on the seats. Now then we already have the bolster material, we don't have the brick weave. Here is Ford's brick weave conveniently laid up over the side of the car with a cloth behind it there may be a little bit of overspray I very much doubt it that doesn't really matter we're short on space we're short on areas to spray so we have to set this up like this reason being this material is needed right away because we've got a, an open window slot and opportunities arisen for the uh, retrimmers to get them seats fixed in my experience it's best to take that opportunity when it arises if it's possible and it is we dilute down the vinyl prep the vinyl clean it's vinyl clean first dissolves all the oils greases and contaminants that may be on, whoops that may be on your old vinyl unlikely on this because it's new off the roll but you never know this is tobacco a dark brown color the Ford's brick weave trim easier to use the tobacco color than black when you're coloring to red which is what we're doing we can't get this in the color that we want which is ruby light ruby interior has two colors ruby light for the seats ruby dark for the dash for the door cards three different types of paint or two sorry three different types of paint vinyl coat for dyeing this the red that we want color bond for colouring the plastic console and the dashboard part uh, plus any plastic parts colour bond that's done in a rattle can you saw the rattle cans just down there pre-mixed on swatches that I sent in then you've got actual two-pack paint does the steering wheel does the metal of the dash again in the two-pack special rattle can show you that when it comes that's been sent off for mixing at the moment as it stands the trimmer needs this material and we need to get this well underway so we've we've just hooked it over the car with a sheet behind we won't be using the top strip because the gun won't get there <clears throat> I'm not going to actually peg it down so we've got plenty on the roll we only need three four meters tops so we've got ourselves a meter there two meters will just be coming up and we'll slowly let it go over once we've treated it first thing to do is to clean it up and as I said you go vinyl prep vinyl clean first then vinyl prep two different types of preparation chemical one's direct application one's a diluted one here we go then bringing them up here's our mix just across here sorry if I'm going a bit quick but there's lots going on apply with a cloth lovely and get that nice and clean and then keep folding out till all the area is clean then we'll re-roll it back up and then begin the paint process the actual vinyl coat itself so I'm going to get busy the next time you see this it's going to be done there's no need for me to film just giving you the uh, instructions on how it works with your custom colour in your interior and you need a certain type of material in vinyl suited to your colour scheme 
this is one way of doing it you can paint vertically or you can paint with this laid out on the ground it's actually easier to paint this way be very careful it's so thin this paint you've got to really just let very lightly dust it on 10 minutes between coats i think i'm going to go on google and just check the drying time between coats and then we're going to be really we're going to get busy all right i might give you a couple of clips but we just want to keep the video concise and moving as i said it's a multitasking situation we wheel the clip just back outside out of the way a quick dust down on the vac so there's no um, dust the air is clean we're ready to dust we're ready to paint blackbird agrees Okay, excuse me, I've got three meters of this to do, so I just keep going. I think it's, it is a red brown colour anyway, this. So. <clears throat> excuse me, you can already see a little bit of red in it. I've not put any paint on, it's just a reddy brown, which is perfect for our red base, uh, our red colour, final colour. So, still doing the vinyl clean and getting ready to move on to the vinyl prep. Just got some boards at the back, resting on the car. Bit unorthodox, but we're not a lot of room in here. You gotta go with what you got. Main thing is it's nice and dust free. I did a big back down. I got as much dust out of here as I could. So that's that. Now we're gonna switch to the vinyl prep and then slowly feed the sheet down and spool it up at the bottom here. Another cloth to go down. And then we'll take it all the way back up and then paint and draw it down paint and draw it down that's how we're gonna we're gonna do it okay let's get the vinyl prep on now that's this little bad boy pop here okay Wow, after a bit of a um, um, of spraying session we're, we're in, we give it uh, the, the right amount of coats that they asked for on the tin, giving the coverage. We do get the old sort of stripes, but what, you, what happens is you can kind of like smooth it up and you kind of like buff it up and then it goes, it gets like a powder on it. And then as you just rub it, powder comes off. And it kind of like just goes uniform so i've had the experience with it before of course on, on on project ruby and we know it's a tried and tested system so uh it's great it's just back to how we did ruby really except i don't think i covered this on the ruby film the vinyl coat application so we're uh, three coats i put on there i got two liters which gives you five meters worth of coverage so i've just gone through about one and a half one liter 1.25 giving me the three meters whatever it is there's a little bit left anyway and we think that we've got good coverage there always looks different under different lights and shadows but um suffice to say once it goes on the seats it really does look the business and uh yeah it works well so that was the system the vinyl clean the vinyl prep then on with the vinyl coat itself and for other plastics we've got color bond actually a different one a colour bond is um, bonds to just uh, ABS plastics. Hopefully, we're going to try that out. We're going to try out colour bond and two-pack rattle cans. You can see in the distance there the suspension clip that was wheeled out in order to do this operation because this took priority because our available slot with the trimmers, which are normally very hard to get into, uh, at short notice, and I've got in there. Although I must admit I did prime him up. So perhaps it's a bit of planning on both sides. I'm going to roll this up now. It's very quick to dry. 
and that's it this is a die not a paint as such more of a die uh, rub test on it's pretty good Ruby's uh, got 18,500 miles on it constantly getting in and out of the car and no signs of wear on Ruby's seat so if you're thinking of doing it take it from me Technispray, Vinyl Coat, they're a good company Over out for now, give you a link at the end of the film but we're going to carry on with the suspension clip now so we'll jump across just like I said we're all over the place but I'm sure you like it out there you don't mind do you? Here we go Okay, so here's this clip nicely wheeled into the workshop and we're ready to start stripping it down. So I'm going to start by just attacking from each side. I'll get the hubs out, calipers off and get it all nicely, get as much stuff out before we start to get those tricky springs off, these uh, under tension springs there. Just started by, I'll take you up, getting that brake pipe off these. A handy items. Let me just get a cloth because we've got some fluid coming out. Let's get that coming over to your screen now. Sorry about that, just off screen. So this brake pipe, specially shaped for the calipers. You want to remember that shape, okay? Because you've got to get it just right to fit in here. You can just see where the cloth is. In it goes and by getting the right shape it won't get caught on the spring or anywhere else if you can just do a loose pipe too big and when you lock your wheels you're going to catch there though these are nicely compact we're going to use a little spring uh, pipe bending tool nearer the time we'll show you that getting built but for now we keep that exactly as it is now we'll take the flexi hose off so i used a, an 11 span i'll show you one i used and don't forget everything's been plus gassed okay and we thank uh, Paul for the plus gas nice one look at this that helped me get that nut off at the top because it just slides over so you can get over the pipe quite often these will just shear off but I was lucky the plus gas has helped if you're gonna think of doing your strip start plus gassing it at least a month before let everyone everything soak in and keep periodically giving it a squirt we're gonna go for this now mixture of 13 15 and 17 I think nuts holding these pipes on started to loosen up I'll cut you to the, the more fun parts hose off another break pipe to save there that's specially shaped as well we want to be looking at getting the hub off the caliper off so that we're clear to start attacking this side getting them swinging arms down that spring off we're going to show you the spring compressor tool any minute now leave this with me for a little bit longer amber sol give a brake pipe there we'll keep that exact shape don't want to lose out these shapes of these so we need to store these safely away somewhere and that's nicely shaped that one as well fits in really well could be a factory pipe doubt it but whoever's done that's done a good job and we'll copy that exact carrying on now so that pipe's out of the way i'm going to get this flexi off next here we go for that
Whoops. The QM bracket for the brake pipe, that's off. Getting close to there now. These split pins will have to come out. I'm going to have to knock the ball joints and split them. There's a, a tight stabilising bar just behind there. It's a long rod with bushes at either end. It's not going to undo. I can see this. See solid. Just see it. We're going to have to cut that. It's only one way, and that was to chop it. Well, the joy is having an impact gun as long as you're careful with it. You just got to watch if you're using a spanner locked on to one end of the nut, just watch it doesn't whip it round. So be wary of where you're locking stuff when you're using one of those guns. I didn't think that stabilizing bar would come off, but it's done it. Okay, I managed to get that lower ball joint nut off. The split pin, boom, just rusted away. Another split pin to take off the top. I don't anticipate being able to knock them split pins out of that rusty. So we just chisel them till they're smooth so you can get a socket on the end. And we're on a 22 lower ball joint. So then we'll start tapping these just to loosen them up. Then we can knock that top wishbone up a little bit. That'll release this, but before we release the carrier, the hub carrier, we're going to take the actual brake disc off and the wheel bearing out because it's easier to do it at that height. So there we go on the, on the jig, looking to get that wishbone up to get this hub off out of the way. Then we can start getting the actual wish, lower wishbone off as well. The lower wishbone is attached to the clip there with that bolt. And then the shock absorber and the actual hub, this hub itself here, is actually holding the two arms together. So it'll be time soon to connect our replacement shock absorber tool. I'm just going to get it for you right now. This replaces the shock. It's time really to get it in place while we're all nicely compressed because if you start taking this off, it tends to try and push down a little bit more, it's harder to fit this. So, I'll get this fitted next, actually. Shock absorb bottom bolt. Now I go up to the top, the bolt going right the way through, boom.
That bolt's pretty stiff in there, it's not turning. The nut's off, but the bolt is. I'm going to tap that bolt. I'll try spin at the end of it, but I doubt it'll go. Hold on. Nope, need a nut on the end of that one. That is stuck. Gonna need heat to get this one out. The sleeve is stuck on the bolt. Shock absorber top bolt, the line of sleeve out of the shock is welded to the bolt itself, so I'm going to try and get it glowing red hot. Definitely crocky to the rescue. I've filed the top off the shock absorber. I'm going to try and chisel it apart now because that bolt is fused to it. It's really tricky. Very nice knot. That you can see what kind of a beating that was took. I ended up getting the reciprocating saw and slicing through, and it's still fused to the bolt. That's the sleeve out of the shock absorber. Completely welded itself onto that bolt, so we couldn't knock the bolt out of here. So we had to cut, chisel, heat, I tried all sorts, but in the end I cut, uh, cut through it with the that reciprocating saw you can see there, got me out, I did a little bit of crocking, I even took the top off the shock absorber, whoa, see solid that was. Anyway, before we were rudely interrupted by that shock absorber, let's get our replacement. I'm going to tidy up now because in seconds it's a mess. Get that shock absorber uh, tool in position. We're going to need a bolt though because we've destroyed it. We'll find one.
Okay, castle nuts, cage, lock and cage off. And these are always, they're always intact. They always come off no problem. So, not sure what size socket that is actually. I should know that. I don't. Socket on there and then the hub will just come straight off, I would imagine, no problem. Might need a tap to get it off the the actual carrier. We'll see. Putting the the, the hardware in the cap. This has got a little washer in it as well. It's all getting replaced, but got my flat blade really for this, not the chisel. there for the outer, there's an inner as well, that's right on the other side of it, that side, we build that up, take that apart, build that up, so we'll put all that on the end of the stub now, just so we've got it safe for now, at least it keeps it all in one place, just so we're ready. Okay, that's the hub, that's the disc off. Now for the fun part. This ain't the best, is it? This plate, we're doing knocking that plate out. I'd imagine these bolts here are going to be tricky, but it's worth trying them ones. We'll stay on while we try them. It looks like we have to knock the socket on for them to fit. They're that quite rusty on the heads there. I think, if I remember rightly, there's a locking tab on the back, I think there is, a hidden little locking tab around there, yeah they are, got a little locking plate, I badly damaged that. Gets the socket on. Definitely a job for the, the electric gun now. It's coming in quite handy. Machine mark for this electric gun. Whoa! <laughs> hey! chisel out for these. Let's take these out and see what we get. Is it going to be an oh yeah moment everybody? Let's try it. Either fenders on. Let's get this pull it off. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Throw that. That's gone. Okay. I've took the steering track on end off. And now for the magic. Now for the, now for the magic. We've got just inside there the telescopic shock absorber replacement and it has a a bolt at the bottom which we tighten up and a thread then winds up and starts to collapse the spring here takes the tension off it we then let this top arm release and then that all that's holding it on then is a bolt through the back 
here because this is off. At the moment this hub is holding them together but we've got the shock absorber replacement on now so when I loosen this uh, hub carrier here it's not going to try and spring apart because the shock absorber bolt device is now clamping in position. It's time to break the ball joint. Now we've got a special tool courtesy of Marky Mark III, a ball joint splitting tool. We'll go and find that. We'll show you one of the advantages of joining the Mark III club. You get the tool. It's only 20 quid a year to join the club. Why aren't you in it? Gotta be. You get access to great stuff. Let's try Marky Mark III's and Janie's Super Duper Ball Joint Splitter exclusive to the Mark III Owners Club. Let's go. Okay, so hub carrier removal. Definitely need a breaker bar for these 22mm castle nuts. Get your locking pins out. Mine just rusted away, so I just chipped them off. And you can find if you can't get your split pins out, just chisel them and you'll find that they're really that rusty, the nut will just smash them and rip them round. So you don't have to worry about spending hours trying to get them out of there, they'll just, they'll just spin out if they're rusty that is. So we're going to take these off and any minute now the super tool Mark Taylor and Jane built this tool from the Mark III Owners Club. It's going to help us break the two ball joints, the upper ball joint and the lower ball joint. These now are enough for me to use my ratchet spanner. No need to keep going like this, so I switch to my ratchet spanner, my missing ratchet spanner. My, oh, it is just below the edge. Switch. Take these out. So, clip strip down, continue. Oh, see the see. In conjunction with a Mark III owner's cord in this episode. Links on the uh, YouTube banner, my channel banner. If you want to go and check the club out. Okay. I do a little magnetic tray. Oh, there's my magnetic tray. I knew there was one knocking about somewhere. It's handy for loading off little bits and bobs. Yeah. Hey, what I need mean? Clean up a holiday and look and look. Right, now. Let's have a see. 22s. So, this arm can go up, there's nothing to stop it going up. This arm will try and go down. There's two more bolts on that tie bar to do as well. There's a tie bar here. This is free, this roll bar. tie bar off now or later on. That's a very good point and I believe it's now. Can we get to it? We don't know. Just about. Can't remember the size of the nuts on the tie bar. It's 17 I think. Is that 19? That's 21. It's probably 19 or 17. And this is where you start losing biomes, pens, lighters, not a new one, rulers, ear defenders. This is where stuff just goes missing. I've been using it. Ah, there's one. I've been using the socket, so I know they're there. Yep, it's that one. And it's time uh, another application of the gun. I don't think these have a lock in. 
plate, but they may be nylox. Let's see if our gun can deliver the goods. Woo! Doesn't want to get that one. Can't get the socket on that one with that there. Let me move this over. Might not be able to reach. Not quite. Breaker bar. It's breaker bar for those. So the gun can't do, can't do everything. Now with these being this tight, it'll try and twist my dolly jig around. See this now we've got. It'll try and capsize the jig. You can see the force on the breaker. They are really tight. They're well seized on. See how much we can get on it. While it's bending the breaker, but I'm gonna try and well what I don't want to do is have this slip off and me lurch forward and hit something. These are trouble. That's just spinning the actual nut and bolt. These are these are going to be these are going to be horrible. I just know it. They're that seized on. And hard to get to. At least one of them is so far. Oh no, they're not going. Houston, we have a problem. He's too lower. Bolts are completely seized. Looking from underneath, I could probably get the air gun on them from underneath. They have had plus gas on them. I might go underneath and get them. So what we're trying to do is a tie bar holds this, stops that flopping around. It's held on with two big bolts. The locking bolts from this side and the condition of the threads is such that they're just looking like they're fused. I mean, you know, you're talking, this could be 40 years since these have been off. Who knows? I have plus gas done, but I'll plus gas again. I was hoping to show you the Cortina tool. We can get the air gun on from this side, so we can try that. We'll need a 19 spanner or other socket to stop it been in this side, 19 spanners have all gone for walks. Where do they go? Where do they go? 10 mil, 13, 19, 17, all disappear. Over to my tool chest here, I'm going to find a backup 19 mil spanner. We're in, we've got one. Got a swan neck. I've got a fighting chance here now, but I just don't think the windy gun, well it's not a windy gun is it, it's electric, but we'll do the job. I'm not holding out much hope for this. Let's make sure it's definitely the right socket, yep, there it is. <laughs> I knew it. Ah, you see, I've got to lock that in place. It's tricky because we've got to lock that. Right, we've got that locked in. Nicely. I can't see it. Oh. Go! We've done it! By Jove, we've done it! Yep. That gun is coming into its own. That's great. The only thing is, I just need to 
hold that. Don't want to trap my fingers. what there's a massive heat wave massive heat wave coming in <laughs> shouting there's a huge heat wave coming in from france well it's already hitting here now it's gone really humid in here sweating i don't normally i don't normally sweat right look how we got out of jail uh, there we got that off that looked bad. So this is the shock impact from this machine mark then this for this Clark electric gun. I'd say medium use. It's going to do the job. It's already helping me here. Whether or not we get to, and try the same procedure again. Obviously, don't smack myself on the knee with this spanner. I could do with a system of. There'll be a way of doing this where you can lock a spanner in place. There will be a method or a technique used out there. Mechanics will know. What you don't want to do is hold on to that spanner because if I'm using a powerful tool that's got its own mind of its own, you know, if I had a bar this side, I'd feel if I was going to pinch myself, but that gun could whip that spanner around and, and crush your fingers, so you can't really afford to get near it. It's just got to hold on there. Try it, everything's worth a shot. Yeah, it does help if you take your nut out, dumbbell. What will we get? It's like it's done it. Right, watch that. That's what I'm talking about. Smoking that. Right. Oh, I don't know why it hurts taking off the idiot vendors. It's one of those things, it's like having water in your ear and you go like that and it comes out. Oh, you've been swimming and you go like that and the water just runs out. <laughs> The end of that tie bar. That's that's good to go. We are now in a position where I don't think that tie bar's under particular tension. I think we can now release. We need to put a start putting a bit of tension on the unit now. So that is a 20, 21, I think. Yeah, it is. I need to put a bit of tension on this. I'm just going to hand wind it first. So, a threaded bolt is now going up. And it's getting shorter and shorter. Hence, compressing the spring. See it already squashing it. There, it's so now time. We've got a little bit of tension on it, we can now release this top arm and then we can take, I think, I'm just trying to think, yeah, we want to get the ball joints better to push that top one up, that's what we want to do. 
Right, I'll show you that device. Here it is, coming into your screens now. You even get them, you even get them stamped with your name on. What it does, it locks between the two upper and lower ball joints. You turn this, it's threaded, and it opens and splits them apart. Great idea. I think it's based on Ford's two original service tool that they would have had at a dealer. But what a great little bit of kit. Two little ball bearings in each end. Marky and Jane for that one. Fit it now. The ends of the bolts have little cups in them, so these ball bearings fit into the cups. And as I wind this now with a spanner, I don't know what spanner size it is, it will then push these two apart. I'm just trying to think, is there anything to stop them? Push, well, it'll, it'll, it'll certainly push the top, it'll knock this one out, that's what it'll do. And then I'm not sure how you knock the bottom one out. Going to do only one of them, there must be a way of controlling it so you do both. Just getting it to line up. And I bring you so you can see it, of course. You're no good over there now, you're thinking, what's he doing? You'll come over there and have a look at this. See you in a sec. Okay, so there we are. A ball joint there and a ball joint at the top held together with this hub carrier. Springs trying to push down on that. This wishbone's free to release itself and go up. Then if we take this bolt out here, this starts to detach away from the structure and we guide it out by unwinding this spring there. See how that plate, the places where the shock absorber would have been and by undoing this you unwind the threads. That's how you do it. So, it's time to get the spanner on that. Let's see if it breaks them apart. It should do. Okay, well it's pushed the bottom one out okay. And I remembered to put a nut on there. When it does push it out, it pops down and lands on that. Otherwise, it'll fall completely out. So I'm just tensioning up. I'm nearly ending my travel. That nut really could do being wound in more. But that's now spinning, so I'm sort of like stuck. But... It's got plenty of tension on that. I'm going to just try lightly tapping there now because that's pretty tight and it should knock that out. There's plenty of tension on that. Okay, I'm going to give it a tap. I don't think I can do it for you. Okay. If it does release, the, the tool will fall out. Boom. And that's it. I'd say that's a success. I'm glad we caught that on camera. Well done, Mark and Jane. Okay, with them ball joints split, you're now able to remove that quite nicely, which now means that the only thing that's stopping these from going like that is this tool underneath there. You can just see it there. And the name of the game now, tension it up just a little bit more, then we'll get this bolt out. Then what happens is, once that bolt's out, this will try and ping down a little bit, and you start to unwind it, and it'll just, it'll just come off, and that'll be the end. And it slowly unwinds that tension there in the spring. That's how you do it, and fit in the reverse of this. So what I'll do, I'll put a little bit more tension on it now, and then I'll undo this bolt here. It always gets me this. It's always nerve-wracking. Because you never know. You think, oh, if the weld breaks on that, that's going to just fly out of there. And take your foot off. Okay, I've wound that bolt, so that's squashed the spring. See how it's compressed now? And I've just... This bolt came out reasonably easy. We just knocked that bolt out. Here it is. So that's, we just tap that out of there. When you tap it out of there, this lower arm will tend to just jump forward. You can see, look, I can pull it out. So it's not, there's no tension on that bolt, see? 
that's where you want to be so that that arm's not under any tension otherwise you won't be able to withdraw this bolt that's why you need to collapse that spring up quite high bear in mind that these can also be seized in so you can be thinking that it's because of the spring tension when in fact your bolt's actually seized so bear both of those considerations in mind so now what all we have to do now is un unwind this here and that's a little bit nerve-wracking it's probably not as nerve-wracking as actually um, winding it up so we're coming out and you'll see it uh, expand and then eventually it'll all fall apart and the spring will pop out and then this will come withdraw and the whole thing is done I'll put this, I'll put this on so you can watch me panic here we go well here we go I don't know if there's a good place to stand whether you should have eye protection on, I mean I'm going to go for eye protection anyway it's probably chopped my feet off with my Converse shoes though it's game over for my shoes and my face there we go let's get the tension on Still under tension, you're still with us. Still under tension, we might be running out of thread now, so where it gets a bit hit and miss. Looking good, breaking out of there. I think that might be it. Uh, well, there's a little bit left. Let's just go to the end. I've just come. I've just come to have a little break. I think the battery went, so I've just got you going. I'm, I'm nearly there. Uh, I just. Uh, I just think it's still going to. I think it's still going to spring out. I think I'm going to run out of thread on the. Uh, the only thing is, there's no thread indicator on this. I need to get the torch in. And have a look to see if I can see the end of the bolt. I think uh, I can't quite tell. I wish that it had a way of knowing when the, this is about to run out of spring. I think it's, if, it, if, the, if it runs out of spring, it's all going to suddenly just collapse. Kinetic energy, the pure kinetic. So what happened there is, it's very close. Hang on. Oh. Maybe it's just if that was just a little bit longer, because it just comes to the end, and you've no warning that it's about to go at that point. I could do a thread marker and say, right, once you see that yellow line would be some kind of like yellow line there we know we're about to go now that when that thread runs out the springs almost completely expanded but there's just that little bit um, it's only really really nerve-wracking when you're up at the top by the time you've got down here it's, it's lost all its kinetic energy so but every time it gets me and I've got to do another side yet I've earned myself a beer I'm getting out of here that your top wishbone is easy to get out you know what I shouldn't use my lovely extension bar to be knocking bolts through very 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 naughty these are not designed for that okay top wishbone 
another bolt, washer and nut, building them all up, putting them all in the box, gathering everything together. This will just slide out. Boom! <laughs> Looks like space for failure that crashed. Okay. Top wishbone gone, bottom wishbone gone, tie bar still see up, oh, tie bar roll, front roll bar release, tie bar there. That's completely seized on. We're just gonna slice straight through that with the angle grinder with a slitting disc on it. Undo it on that side, there's a big bolt there, that'll be fun. In fact, there's an argument to say you should have got that bolt out before you took it off here, you idiot. Oh, because that'll try and rotate that. It'll probably be gone. What'll happen is it'll try and spin this round. As if it was on the wishbone, it was already locked, so I'm trying to remember to get these off. Where are they? Are you showing up on camera there? Yeah, them ones. Okay, well, that's it for today's job. I'm worn out after doing that spring takes it out of you. There's our super device then. I'll just hope you're still on screen, aren't you? So we don't need it here now. Take it out. Down we go. What a beauty. And there it is. And that's what uh, gets you out of trouble and gets your springs swapped. It's a special high tensile bolt, by the way. Off, actually, actually off a spring compressor kit. Spring compressor kit that I took to pieces and used for this. Alright, I built this one. Over and out for today. Catch you tomorrow. I'm tired and I've definitely earned my beer now. I don't care what anybody says. I'll see you in a minute. Pete's earned his beer.
Okay, continuing this side, same as what we did before. Get the split pins out of these upper and lower ball joints, get the shock absorber mounts off, get this bottom tie bar off. So I'll just keep on hacking away at this one. And then we're nearly stripped down for this clip, cradle, suspension, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do these, this tie bar bottom from underneath. That looks like another seized shock absorber top bolt. Could we be into a load more drilling to get that one out? Doesn't look good. So these bolts and the nut are going to be destroyed, I think. I reckon that'll be fused into the top of the shock. We need it out so we can drop that shock absorber out of there. We'll have to start uh, giving it a little bit more boom boom. Then we might have to do what we did on the previous side. Hope not, but let's see.
I say, Jack, you know I'd come for you, I think. You know I'd come for you. It's Ted Brunley, it's Ted. Ted Brunley. It's Ted Brunley. Jack, for Christ's sake, Jack. Jack, for Christ's sake. You want to go to the toilet, have you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I kept that, right? You still got your sense of humour, Jack? Yeah, I kept that, Eric. I've forgotten it all. Do you know I've almost forgotten what you look like? <clears throat> Do you know I've almost forgotten what your eyes look like? They're still the same. Pee holes in the snow. You still got your sense of humour, Jack? I kept that, yeah. Can't do my can't do accent, sorry. Yeah, I've done that, Eric. We kept that, Eric. Okay, spring compressor now going on this side of the clip. I keep calling it a clip, but it's a, a cradle, not a clip. Just get the top. In line. On it. That's it. That's in the top. Plates in at the bottom. We can wind it on the 19 just a little bit before we take out the bottom. Oh, sockets wandering. Time for a tidy up again. Spider the socket. 21. 90. What? Where is it? Oops. It is 21. 21 today. Right. Let's go, let's get, can you see up there? I can't tell if you can see. I think you can, my hands in the middle of the screen, yeah, you can. Wind it up a little bit. Splitter in there now, painted it. Split them open. Be glad when this is over. Last one. Let's... Always use a breaker bar when you're doing these. If your split pins are rusted, chisel them with a, that nice fine chisel here. It won't make any odds. Don't try and get them out if they're rusted. If you're chucking the ball joints away. It doesn't matter that it's still stuck inside the uh, the taper. So I just chisel them out. You never knock them out when they've been in for that many years. They're always seized in. There's no point in drilling them off because, as I say, you're not using the ball joints anymore. Presumably you're changing. These are original ones because they're held in with rivets. You obviously have to drill. Got to drill these rivets out before we take these to the powder coat. So these have got to come off. They can be quite fun, even when you take the head off it. The rivet still manages to hold in, you've got to knock it out. It can be tricky, some some go easy. So break a bar on the ball joints just to get that nut on its way. 
same this side I'll chisel off the remainder of the split pin take you down to have a look that rusty split pin will be around there somewhere head of it just there I just no point trying to get that out then you need the breaker bar get the torque and then uh, we we're getting to the point where we could start loosening these off and then just basically you don't take the nut off I think that's what I learned leave the nut on when you use the ball joint splitter okay now you've got two ball joints sometimes you can strike those and they'll go but if you want a guaranteed result you use this nice little tool it's got a little ball bearing at each end which fits in the little concaves in the in the threaded section of the ball joint place in there and then just open it up with a spanner I think it's 22 spanner I'll check in a second put that in there and then it'll crack those open all we do uh, spanner tap ready we've got it somewhere Here we go. We need, we need two spanners. We just open it up. I've got to get another another 22, which is hanging around somewhere. Certainly not that one. I may have to break and just get this other 22 for you. Then we shall resume. No, things are all starting to go missing. Hold on while I get to that. We're going to lock one spanner on, open it, and it should crack those. Let's have a let's have a go in a sec. We get a spanner. Okay. Plenty of tension on there. I'm going to tap it. Whoa! Well, it worked. Maybe jump, but it did it. So we've done the top one. That's the one that went there. I suppose you've just got to be ready for that. Uh, at least it does it. I think you have to prepare yourself for when it actually releases. But it's a great little tool. Maybe jump then. Not really particularly dangerous that. Um, it just the thought, the noise. Most of the noise you heard then was that shooting upwards, and this just actually falls out under gravity. This doesn't actually get projected out, so it's not a dangerous job because it sometimes make you jump when these actually pop. The bottom one hasn't popped. The top one has gone. And it's just gone on its um, nut. So now we'll break the bottom one. You can see the top one's just on its nut there. You can just see. I'll bring you up a touch. Just getting you in. There you go, you're nice and central there. 22, we can carry on with the bottom one. There's enough um, thread on it to get all the way. I just wish I had another spanner. So I'll do this. That's because the top one's landed on its retaining, on its fixing nut. You can now let the force go onto this one. If you want, you can just tension it up and tap it lightly and you might find that you get a bit more control that way rather than what I did then, just going quite tight till it actually cracked. You might find you want to just, you could ease it in. Let's get a copper hammer on. Well, I don't need a copper hammer actually on that. off screen there bringing you down a little bit and back out a little bit so 
so I can cut the video just there. Okay, I'm locked in at the top. Top ball joint, you heard that go ping. The main advantage is you don't damage your rubbers. You can get a tool which fits in on the rubbers, like a wedge shape, and you knock them in. You may have seen those ball joint splitters. But the forks can rupture the rubber, which I suppose, in my case, wouldn't matter because they're being discarded. So, you know, this hand is handy if you don't want to damage them. Whoa! There goes your second one. So that's both of them. I was just ready to tap that actually, but it's done it itself. So a little bit of a, a, a jump that makes you scared a little bit when it pops, but it's okay. So we're both out on both there. That's gone. Now it's time to, I think we can lift the top arm up out of the way. We can then start releasing this. We need to get that nut out of the back of this arm here now. Let's carry on with that. We can unwind this now if we want. We're going to take this bolt out of the back. I'm hoping that's going to tap out. Now this, the last one I did on the other side, this is the lower wishbone bolt. That was a bit tight. No, this one's good. We're all right, I'll spin you around. This one's okay. We need a bar. I'm going to break the rules now. Um, you can, you can uh, get me on this one. This is completely wrong. I'm using one of my extension socket bars to tap the bolt. Through. Sorry, very sorry about that. But there's not much force on it. You can see the lower arm drop away in a sec. Keep your eye on this bit. You can see it drop forward. Oh! Under a little bit of tension, my socket bar's slightly caught. Now, that didn't happen last time, so this could be wound up in a different position. So that's stuck in. Nice, you stupid. You could probably tighten this now till that loosens. Or you could pull that out. Um, hold on. It just depends on how you've got the tension set on this. And it always tries to pull forward that way anyway. And this isn't the mega tension, but it's and also really it's probably a better procedure than what I've done now, I reckon. But I'm about to get this out. Should be able to. There we go. Here it pings forward then. Off it goes that way. Now that varies depending on how much I've got the spring compressor done. There's nothing to stop. I can take this out last, this top one. There's nothing to stop me unwinding this now. This is gone. So let's do it. Let's do the dangerous bit. Push back. I'm going to get away from it. So it's just out of there. It's your view. Do the dangerous bit. Okay then, we have the spring compressor wound up, all the bits are ready to go, wishbone, all release, ball joints done its job, thanks to the club. And now we have 22,000 Newton meters of kinetic energy stored in this spring. I mean, I'm probably, this is probably the dangerous bit right right now. As soon as I start unwinding it, danger level increases, decreases. Here's the fender's on. Electric winding on, ready to go. Whoa! Oh. There we go. Hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. We're going for a little ride. Goodbye. <laughs> I'd expect to see any minute the lower wishbone separating out and coming across. So far no evidence of that which means it's jammed on the, the liner. It's 
best just to give it a hand. Okay there. <clears throat> Can't tell you how scary this is. That's what I was telling you about. It needs to be, it needs to be out of there, just so you've got a nice straight run down. It tends to catch on that bush. So halfway through your procedure, if you're finding your lower wishbone sticking, just give it a little. Okay, let's carry on. Job done. Whew. <laughs> Tea break time. Where am I? Oh, man. Where was I? Uh, there I am. Do you know what? The humidity's high. Got a whistle. The humidity's high. The sweat has broken out. It's just very sticky today on the 29th of June. 2019 as we power our way through Project Bramble. I'm gonna get through it, power through it. Okay, you just saw us stripping down the suspension subframe and now I'm taking out the old factory riveted in upper and lower ball joints. Okay, now all I've done is croc sanded off the heads there and then a cold chisel between it and hopefully you'll get them out. Sometimes even when you sand off the heads of the rivets, they still don't come out. But this first one's gone all right. As I say, they, they, they don't always come out. This first one's gone good. What I'm now going to do the lower, that was the upper. Here's the lower, that's only two rivets on that one. Get them from behind there, drill them from behind. I say drill them, croc sand them from behind into the vice just down here, I'll bring it down to the vice, we'll have a go, see if these come out, and there's two more to do. So all about getting that clip stripped down, that suspension, subframe. Point you down at the vice, let's do some stuff. Thank you. 